I'd like to take you on a tour of the Movement Lab and Movement Pro software. Here we have an individual doing a double leg squat. And as you can see, we're recording in 3D. So you can see images from the front, from the side, from the top, and from below. It's possible to toggle through all of these by switching on the perspective that you would like to see. Let's stick to the front for now. And let's look at some reference points so that we can orient ourselves with gravity as opposed to his body parts so we don't get distracted by any odd features. You can see his base of support here and the line of gravity which is projected up from the middle of his ankles. The first layer we can add on top of his 3D image is his tracking points. These are what we call key points to allow us to build a biomechanical model. And then on top of that we can add the trajectories or the pathways that the body parts are moving. And of course you can see those pathways in 3D. The pathways are derived from the X, Y, Z coordinates of all the body parts. We have our own proprietary tracking, which is very accurate. And because it's accurate, the knees are actually where the knees should be. As a comparison, I'd like to show you some other tracking, which comes automatically with various sensors. In this case, the knees are not where the knees are and the ankles are certainly not where the ankles should be. So we have our own proprietary tracking algorithms produced by Quinematic for the movement software. It's very difficult to describe a movement like this in text. You can't beat a good image to describe it. A picture tells a thousand words. But you do need to document, and in order to document something like this, you need to be able doc to document some sort of a report which can give you numbers or metrics or biomarkers to describe what is happening with this individual. You can look at how various body parts contribute to the movement. You can measure the trajectory of the right knee, which is traveling at seven degrees and shifting 0.7 degrees laterally and you can look at individual body parts and how they contribute to the movement in this case the left knee travels in a straight line it travels at 21 degrees its lateral shift is 4.5 centimeters from the top to the bottom with a corresponding movement of the hips going outwards by three degrees or half a centimeter and not so much movement occurring in the shoulders as you can see here. So these lines are quite flat, but the left knee in isolation is traveling inwards quite significantly. Now, if we wanted to look at the left legged squat, we can watch it in normal speed, which gets a little bit tricky to see all body parts. We can do it frame by frame, or we can just drag along the timeline to see when this person seems to be losing control. In this case, the left foot is pronating, the shank is vertical, so the knee is over the foot. And some people might say that the knee is not medial to the foot, and in that case, it's not a problem. But in our opinion, even though the knee is over the foot, if the angle of the femur is so extreme and the hips are traveling laterally and the shoulders are compensating and even the head is compensating, then this is not a satisfactory performance. When we bring in the feedback screen, it's possible to move the person in 3D and use this to communicate to the client. You can see some basic stick figures that show that this right knee is internally rotated with a slight apparent valgus, but it's actually an internal rotation of the hip, which becomes quite apparent when you zoom in here. You can also see that the trunk is a little bit deviated across to the right, and yet the head is centered, which means that the, the trunk and the neck moving to the right side is matched by a lateral tilt, side tilt to the left of the head, 
and that means the top of the head is sitting in the middle. Posture from the side looks excellent. He's sitting right on the plumb line, which is very efficient. And his weight distribution is almost 50-50 left and right. He has a very small, small sway, uh, but it is towards the heels. And that's not surprising when this chap tends to get pain in his heels or what could potentially be a fat pad problem in his heels, primarily because he's weight bearing most of the time on his heels. And you can see his balance on the left. It's a little bit lateral to the axis of the foot. Balance on the right is far more lateral. And if you need to compare those two, you can see the position of the head and the shoulders to the right is much more extreme compared to on the left. And that's not a surprise when his right hip is internally rotated. He'll be far less stable in that case uh, compared to the left hip, which seems to be in a more neutral position. Side bending is quite symmetrical left and right, and the distance is very good. He goes to 23% of his height. Normally we have a cutoff point for Northern Europeans at 30%, and in this case he's well and truly under 30%. So you can see he's quite flexible and very symmetrical. Uh, it's when we look at the double leg squat or dynamic balance that things go a little bit off center. In this case, pretty much everything is off center. And we can track it from the top of the squat to the bottom of the squat and then the return to the top again. If you want to review this in side to see if he leans forwards or leans backwards, if in fact he's got a restricted squat or a free squat, in this case his knees go well and truly over his toes so it is not a restricted squat. Single leg squat can be observed in a similar fashion from top of squat to bottom of squat. In this case, when he's at top of squat, the foot tends to be in a little bit of pronation, but it's a more neutral position. It really is towards the end of the squat that the, fall, the foot falls into a pronated position and the knee falls in towards the line of gravity. His trunk is fairly upright, but he's trying to compensate with his shoulders and the hips are sticking out to the side. And this would be what you might call a postural orientation error from the literature. On the right hand side, it also goes in quite dramatically, but it's much messier. You can see the amount of internal rotation that's occurring here. It's very evident that he's got internal rotation control issues with a little bit of trunk rotation on the way down. And that's what's making his shoulders look quite messy. So if we compare those two, the control element's different, but the angles are not significantly different. Both knees are going towards the line of gravity over the ankle, um, but there's a significant difference in compensation in the upper body. The left shoulder is up on both left and right squat. And that brings us back to our main page again. What we can do is exit here and go into the portal the portal will allow us to see the same performance but inside a web application. And that web application can be used across different devices, Mac, PC, tablet, telephone. So here we can look at the scan that we've just observed in the Movement Lab software, which is installed on a computer, but this time we can look at it online. This gives us the opportunity to bring up the measurements during the performance also to bring up the trajectories which we saw before to look at multiple views and these views will give us different perspectives in order to analyze the quality of movement from different angles if you want to enhance this you can bring in the xyz planes of movement or the frontal, transverse and sagittal planes of movement, which is very good for teaching purposes and for educating patients who are interested in this sort of thing. From here, you can also generate a biomechanics report and you can generate a summary report for the patient inside the app environment. So there's no need to email or print or anything like that. And you have the opportunity to write comments and then those comments can be sent 
to the individual. Furthermore, you have the opportunity to have a chat and you can skip straight into the exercise prescription feature and give him one week of exercises once a day and select from a variety of exercises that are specifically designed to address the issues that we pick up during our testing protocols. You can send surveys, patient specific functional scale. You can send uh, pain charts, uh, lifestyle questionnaires, depression scale, just in case you suspect that they won't do their rehab because they're not motivated. And you can set goals, which is very important so that they have something that matters to them to reach. You can look at a history of scans that have been done in the past. One of the features that works quite nicely inside of scans is the ability to compare scans. Now with the comparison feature, you're able to see scan number one versus scan number two. And you can compare the left squat for both sides. So this was pre-intervention before he was given an exercise to strengthen the external rotators and this is after. And it becomes quite apparent when you look at the quality of the movement that the left leg is much improved. A spontaneous response to doing uh, an exercise called the, the clam. And basically what you're doing is just triggering the external rotation muscles to control the hip joint on the way down into the squat. So it's a dynamic improvement as compared to the first, which is all over the place.